Okay, we're back. So now we're going to talk about toxicology and specifically the toxidromes. And toxidromes stand for toxic syndromes. So you mash up those words and you end up with toxidromes. And know these. And we're only going to go over a few of them. Uh, we'll do the anticholinergic, the sympathomimetic, sedative hypnotic, opioid, cholinergic, and serotonin syndrome. Now these might seem like a lot, but I think you've run into these at some point during your training. So let's just review them because I think you know them already. So let's start with the anticholinergic toxidrome. And this is the one that comes with that uh, common saying, hot as a hair, dry as a bone, red as a beet, blind as a bat, and mad as a hatter. And so they end up being hot because their temperature goes up. Not crazy high, but they might be 101 degrees or something like that. So they're definitely warm. They're dry, meaning they're not sweating. Their mucous membranes are dry. And really one of the best ways to determine if someone is dry is to stick your hand in their armpit. Put on a glove because that is kind of gross. But most people have a little bit of sweat there, and so if there's none at all, then you can say, yeah, they're probably dry. You can also look at their mucous membranes and see if those are dry, too. Their skin is going to be flushed, so they're going to look red. And their pupils are going to be huge, and so they're blind. And they're going to have a little bit of altered mental status, so they're, they're uh, pleasantly agitated. They're not getting up and taking swings at you. They're not violent, but they're definitely... Uh, have some altered mental status. And these are all the anti-muscarinic symptoms of the cholinergic receptors. And so you might also notice that they're going to have some decreased bowel sounds and that their bladder might be full. And so what are some of the common offending agents that someone might take that will give you anticholinergics? Well, it's mostly going to be the antihistamines. So think Benadryl and other over-the-counter medicines. You can also think of Jimson weed and sometimes even tricyclic antidepressants can have some anticholinergic effects. Treatment is mostly supportive, though there is a reversal agent called physostigmine. Though this has been known to cause seizures, especially in those who have overdosed on tricyclic antidepressants. So avoid it. The next toxidrome we're going to look at are the sympathomimetics. And there are a lot of similarities between the sympathomimetics and the anticholinergics, which is why we placed them right next to each other. These guys are also going to be altered. But whereas the patients who had the anticholinergic poisons were pleasantly altered, these guys are violent. They're not nice. And you may need security to lock them down. They're also going to have dilated pupils. But instead of being dry, they're going to be wet. They're diaphoretic. And pretty much all their vital signs are going to be up. They're going to have tachycardia. They're going to have an increased respiratory rate, increased, increased blood pressure, and increased temperature. Also, they'll be flushed, just like the other ones, and have some urinary retention. And so the classic drugs you might see this with are the methamphetamines, cocaine. And your treatment is going to be benzos, just to calm them down. Next, let's look at the sedative hypnotics. And some common drugs like drugs of these are like your benzodiazepines, barbiturates, and then your pseudobenzos like Boost Bar and Ambien. And as you would suspect from the name, you're pretty much going to see that everything is kind of slowed down, it's sedated. So all, all their vital signs may be lower, maybe sleepy. Now some of these symptoms are more pronounced with the barbiturates than the benzos. With benzodiazepines, they'll be sleepy, but they usually don't have that much respiratory depression. I wouldn't take my eyes off them, and I'd definitely keep them monitored, especially if they took a lot of them in an ICU setting. But I've had patients who took tons and didn't require intubation, but they did require constant watching. The barbiturates, on the other hand, they are a bit more powerful. They'll drop your blood pressure and take you to the point of being comatose. Patients who have barbiturate overdoses have been laying down on the ground so long that they'll even develop blisters on the parts of the body that were touching the ground, and those are commonly referred to as the barb blisters. So that's one thing to keep an eye out for. And treatment again, supportive. Now we look at opioids, and we're pretty much all familiar with these. They have a decreased mental status, sometimes even to the point of being comatose. They have pinpoint pupils, though Demerol can give you big pupils, just so you know. 
Uh, they'll have a decreased respiratory rate, and probably the most common one that you'll see is heroin. However, there are other ones. You could take the uh, narcotics like Norco, Vicodin, Oxycodone, Morphine, Fentanyl, Demerol, but also Clonidine can cause these, this kind of presentation. And as we talked about before, there is uh, a treatment for it, and that's Narcan, in addition to any supportive measures that you have to do. Now let's look at the cholinergics. And the mnemonic here, I've heard two really. I've heard of sludge and dumbbells. And a lot of this you're going to notice is just the opposite of the anticholinergics, obviously. So D stands for diarrhea and diaphoresis, urination, meiosis, bradycardia, and bronchorrhea. And I put these ones in red because these are the things that are going to kill you. It's unlikely you're going to sweat to death or have poop yourself to death, but if you have so much bronchial secretions, you're going to aspirate them and drown in your own secretions. So these bees are often called the killer bees. Emesis, lacrimation, and salivation. And so you can see really the theme here is these guys are just very wet. They're pooping and peeing themselves. They got all sorts of bronchial secretions. They're puking, they're crying, and they're spitting up and drooling. And the common uh, are like the organophosphates and carbamates. But the more the scarier ones are the nerve agents because these are also going to have some nicotinic effects, namely weakness. And so the mnemonic use for those nicotinic effects are the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday's often given an H because there's already a T for Tuesday and Friday. So you're going to have midriasis, so big open pupils, tachycardia, weakness, paralysis, and that's the thing that kills you with those nerve agents, hypertension, and fasciculation. And there are two important agents to talk about with treatment here. Okay, and that's atropine and pralidoxime, also known as TUPAM. So the atropine is used not in the common doses we use for bradycardia, like 0.5 milligrams or 1 milligram, but in huge doses. You're going to give it until these secretions dry up. Remember, we're trying to keep these people from drowning in their own secretions. And it used to be, if you didn't have enough in the old days, a patient might use up an entire hospital's supply. Now the pralidoxin or 2PAM is meant to kind of counteract the uh, weakness in it. This has to be given in a time sensitive, um, quicker you give it before there's irreversible binding and, and, and the paralysis becomes long standing. If that happens, then these patients tend to be intubated until they are able to make more acetylcholinesterase. Okay, so now let's look at the last one, which is serotonin syndrome. And this comes from your SSRIs, cocaine, and dextromethorphan. Yes, Robitussin. And so with this you're going to see patients with some altered mental status, clonus, and rigidity. And the treatment here, again benzos, and a drug called ciproheptidine. These guys might also get warm too. And these are our toxidromes. You're going to get more information knowing these than you're going to get from any urine drug screen. When you look at these features, you're going to kind of be able to take a guess as to what kind of drug the patient took. And then you can get specific levels if you want to confirm that. So maybe watch this video again if you need to so that you can review the toxidromes. We looked at the anticholinergics, sympathomimetics, sedative hypnotics, opioids, cholinergics, as well as the serotonin syndrome. Okay, next we're going to look at the various kind of tests you can order on tox patients, and then we're going to end it all up in the next video, in the subsequent video with uh, decontamination that are good for general toxic exposures. Okay, and see you then.